Hello, I'm Lucy Lang. I'm the executive director of the Institute for Innovation and Prosecution. I was really struck when Carol talked about uh, fighting against American instincts in criminal justice because in my 12 years as a prosecutor, I found that the instincts I was developing were not necessarily the best instincts that the system should be evincing. And about 10 years into my time at the Manhattan DA's office, I realized that my the depth of my compassion towards victims and witnesses in cases had led to a kind of blindness with respect to the consequences of my decision making. So as a result, I piloted a college course in Queensboro Correctional Facility that brought together incarcerated students and prosecutors to study criminal justice together. And it really resulted in a kind of uh, radical empathy. It also coincided with uh, the, the birth of my children, which I think may have had something to do with it. Uh, but I kind of found that I couldn't look away from the consequences of what I was doing as a prosecutor anymore, which isn't to say that I am not very proud of all of the work that I have done on behalf of the city and really believe in the work that prosecutors across the country are doing. But I know that they, like I, can do it differently if it's not being done based on instinct. So when Carol came to me with the idea of, of replacing my predecessor, who was the founding executive director of the IIP, which was another of Jeremy's wonderful brain children, I was really excited at the idea of coming to a college that, and there's just nowhere else like this, historically known as a place where cops get educated, but also a place that educates incarcerated people and their families and an amazing cross-section of New York City. I mean, really, it is a, an institution that looks like our city. So I uh, came here about a year ago. I brought my prosecutor's class along with me. We call it Inside Criminal Justice. And it's expanded now to several additional district attorney's offices. We're going into our fourth semester in our, our fourth prison. And it is changing hearts and minds in DA's offices. And we're doing that to try to counteract the instincts, but we're also doing it in collaboration with Preeti and some of the other uh, data folks here who help us look at and study the ways in which we're able to affect mindset shifts and culture change in district attorney's offices. One of the wonderful initiatives that I came into was an executive session on the role of the prosecutor. And we're nearing the end of this three-year process that brings together prosecution leaders from around the country and has published eight papers to date and several more forthcoming about big picture questions in the field of prosecution. And I hope that you'll pick some up on your way out and take a chance to have a look at them or look at them on our website, which is prosecution.org. That has been a really um, useful way of thinking about the big picture questions facing prosecution. And then we have a number of narrower initiatives that focus on subsets of some of those issues, but that bring together prosecutors and community members and experts in uh, thoughtful dialogue over a long period of time to try to create actionable results. One such process resulted in a toolkit that we rolled out earlier this year around prosecutors' ability to ensure appropriate accountability in cases of officer-involved fatalities. We presented on that to the Congressional Black Caucus, and it's been adopted as a set of protocols in a number of DA's offices around the country. We're currently in the process of working with the Vera Institute to bring together prosecutors and community members to study issues of dignity and racial justice in their office. And I'm grateful that Carol was a member of that working group and we're hopeful that we'll be able to push out a set of multimedia training materials to DA's offices early in the new year. We're looking at taking on some questions related to training in the new year. We're looking at uh, the question of culture change and how to operationalize it. You know, another interesting thing that you said, Carol, about how we don't need the federal government to do this is that uh, we actually, the, the federal government actually can't do a lot of this. And in some ways, that's no more, no, in no area more obvious than through DA's offices, because there are 2,400 of those offices nationally, and they have ranging from 1,000 lawyers to one lawyer. So all of these solutions have to be really tailorable to the specific offices. I've been really fortunate to get to connect over the past year with large swaths of the prosecution population nationally and identify what a wide range of issues there are in these offices, but really begin to identify some of the commonalities and start to think about ways that we can uh, employ data to get offices to combat the baser instincts of uh, pro-law and order 
and vengefulness that have informed so much of the foundation of prosecution in this country.